All right, on today's video, we are going to be doing a couple things. First of all, it's gonna be testing out one of our new products. Here on the table, you can see a bunch of snap rings of all different sizes and uniball bearings. We've got one already installed sitting in there. These are conveniently going to be replacing those very deflective rubber bushings that come factory on your Corvettes. Unfortunately, GM decided to make a different size bushing for every part of the control arm, front to back, they're all different. So you can see we've got a big housing with a large snap ring. We've got a small housing with a small snap ring. I'm assuming that the purpose of the difference in bushing size from GM is due to them determining how much deflection they were going to allow given on a certain part of the control arm. And that's my theory. So under braking and under acceleration, you're gonna see deflection. Obviously the smaller the bushing, the less deflection you're gonna get, but then also the less comfort you're gonna get with that as well. So they probably decided to go with the best of both because it was a production car. We're going solid bearing because that's gonna give us the best performance and it's gonna not be nearly as comfortable and you're gonna feel all the bumps in the road and hear all the sounds that it makes, but we're gonna press these in. We're gonna check our fits, the press fits that we did because we measured a different set of control arms than we're installing right now. And we noticed that the machining wasn't that tight of tolerances from GM. So we've got some things to, to play with to make sure that our press fits are correct. And then we're gonna use these arms on a display that I designed for simulating stock angle versus our angle kit, all moving off of the same steering racks through some linkages and it's gonna be like a, what would you call that, interactive? It's gonna be a interactive display that we're gonna to take to events like Gridlife, Hyperfest, stuff where a lot of people are there and they can mess around with it and play with it and, and see why you would wanna buy our products versus like the exact replacement products, which is the OEM suspension. Anyways, talking too much, let's get into some pressing and see uh, how it goes. If I uncover the mesh, you'll see that this is actually the front end of a Corvette. You have the knuckle control arm. This is the subframe. This is the frame rail. Um, I'm gonna hide that just so you can see things better. This is gonna be the lever that the users will be able to articulate. And you can see that the lever moves these simulated steering racks. We're gonna have a linkage here, probably an adjustable rod with some heim joints or something. And then our tie rods are gonna be connected to this. You can see that it's going to articulate the same for each model, the OEM setup and then our angle kit setup because they are connected with this link bar and this tube. Um, these are the Heim joints, so it's just going to be a really simple display and example of what this is going to do, and then we're really going to be able to see how it simulates the angle. I didn't do the full simulation, it's kind of one of those projects where I know exactly what I needed to do. I don't want to spend a ton of time on it um, because I'm going to make it work in reality. I just needed to get the important pieces, so that's it. For the purpose of just assembling a couple things, I am setting up a bearing presser, basically a washer on this side, a socket that's the same diameter as the bearing, and I'm gonna suck them together. Mass assembling, we wouldn't do it this way. We would have a setup much different. But essentially, I should be able to just pull them together Nice and slow, nice and steady. Okay. Need to go a little bit further. I kind of ran out of thread, or no, we're good. You can see that in there, bearing. And we have room for the snap ring there. So we're gonna install the internal snap ring, then we're gonna push this into the arm and install the external snap ring. The external boy looks like that. You can see how the tongs are different. The internal looks like this. 
that goes in there. You hear that? That click? Good. I'm not gonna put this on yet. That's gonna contain this within the controller. Gotta love that sound. Okay, there you have it. We have four bushings, different sizes. We're gonna press these babies into the arms. We're probably gonna need to use the big boy over there. Press these in. All right. My tactic is don't die and uh, that's about it. Gonna run out of stroke. So far, pretty good. Need to build this up a little bit with some plates or technically a tube because this will need to plunge through. Nice, let's try this. Okay, okay, we're getting somewhere. It's nice, it's real nice. Nice. Okay, good seat, good seat. Looks like we'll just have enough room to fit the, might have to just pick the exterior snap ring to get it to clip. There's a little bit of debris or whatever was in there, but that should be easy. So we'll see how that goes after. So far, so good. We actually have studs to press into these. I think I made the right call in doing them after. Um, just because that would have been really difficult with big studs sticking out. So we'll see how that goes. Now for the big arm, start with the small one. Okay, that'll pass through. Oh, just. It's like it was built for it. That one had some resistance. This is a 44 ton press, so it's hard to tell sometimes if something's too hard, it does, this thing doesn't really care. Next one is gonna be a little trickier because I don't have a tube big enough. Yes, I do. It's just a little too tall. There's gotta be some off cuts. This is exhaust tube. The exact difference is. Wow, another nice fit. So yeah, a little bit of a uh, powder coat just on the initial press to clean out. And uh, yeah, we have a uniball lower and upper. Ready to go on our jig. Do you have those studs? These are the studs. They must be installed shoulder to the outside, shoulder to the outside. And we're gonna see how these go in. We have to be careful with the pressure we put on this one because it's pushing against the internal snap ring. So snap rings are pretty strong, but you would be able, with this press, you would definitely be able to blast it past. So I can see there's still a little gap between the shoulder of the bearing and this. I may finish this off with a hand press just to be safe. Here we have it. You can see the bearing has some play. Like this back and forth. And I know this one's seated fully. I'm just gonna tap this one the rest of the way. Now we just need to check the external snap rings and see if those go on. Tight fit. Okay, so these are a prototype, but I basically got it over and it didn't snap in place. But I was able to use the internal snap ring pliers to close it. So it, you definitely want it to be tight. I don't think it requires any adjustment. It could just be the powder or a nick or something, but who's Nick? Wouldn't you like to know? Jack. 
What do you think, Jack? Need a couple nuts, M14 by two. And then uh, we'll throw the angle kit on the other side and take a look at it. This will show off our new bushings, yeah. yeah. It's a little dual. This is a grip versus drift display. Okay, OEM. Yeah, it's fragile, okay? We're just taking a look at her, man. I don't know, I'm just hanging around. I'm just, I'm just hanging around. I'm just hanging around. So we need smooth adjusters, Corvette spacers, upper control arms, studs. Hey, Rip. So normally we put a snap ring right here. You see there's a little groove there. We're not doing that for the display just because there's no load or nothing going on it. This is just to hold up the knuckle and show you. So. Yeah. Like not today? just, no, not today. I was gonna say, like, this is some sturdy aluminum. Yeah. Looks cooler like this. Interactive display? Yeah, dude. Sure. So they're gonna have the steering racks come through here with linear bearings. No way. So you're gonna, gonna connect a You're gonna button. push a lever and it's gonna turn both at the same time. But this one will only go this far and this one will go that far. So you're gonna be like, wow, one turns way further than the other. And then you're like, yeah, this is why. That's our Uniball kits that we're gonna be selling. For OEM Corvette arms? Yeah. So for the Grip, grip Daddies. The Grip Boys, yep. Yeah. So I'm gonna get the linear slides from the office. From here on, now it's custom fabrication. Looking at the back of the display, this is where we're gonna have a lot of our mechanisms. These are my two linear slides that are gonna house the steering rack. So it takes a three quarter shaft, it's gonna slide through, then I'm gonna connect an inner tie rod, the outer tie rod, just like I would for a factory setup. And I'm also gonna be fabricating some things custom. This was all designed on a computer, but we need to make a big four foot tall handle. This is gonna sit about a foot off the ground so that when you're looking down at it, you're gonna see the difference in angle between the two setups and you're gonna get a visual on the difference in track width, how much wider this kit is, how the bump stops work and all that fun stuff. I'm gonna be connecting the two steering racks with uh, linkages that are gonna be rotating on a bar. These two holes here and here are gonna hold three quarter heim joints sticking out. Bar is gonna pass through all of them and then I'm gonna have levers welded to them that are gonna push the rack forward and pull it back. So we've got some custom work to do. We're also gonna then disassemble powder coat make it look beautiful and presentable, build a frame around it so that it can support its own weight and make it look cool. And then, you know, bring it to the track and it's probably gonna weigh way too much, like, I don't know, probably hundred pounds or more, but that's, uh, that's what we gotta do. I'll flip it over for you just so you can take one last look at it. You can kind of see if you were looking, now you're kind of looking at it from the top. Right off the bat, you can see the difference in track width. One of these is way wider than the other. And then with the same amount of steering rack articulation, this one's gonna stop somewhere around there. And this one's gonna stop somewhere around there. And then everyone's gonna be like, wow, how does it do that? And you're gonna turn it the other way. This one's gonna stop about there. And this one's gonna go to there. It's gonna be around double the amount of angle with adjustable points. You're gonna be able to see what makes this kit do what it does and how it does it. That's gonna be the point of this display. Good talking piece. We get to highlight our uniball, monoball bushing replacements on the OEM stuff that we have. And overall, just show off our products. So thanks for watching this. I'm gonna go finish up the missing pieces. And hopefully the next time you see this, it's a functional jig and we have random people messing around with it at Gridlight.